What will happen to your debt when the dollar finally meets its inevitable end? Is it possible that you might be able to take advantage of an inflationary debt jubilee by loading up on debt in anticipation of a hyperinflationary collapse? If you don't have to pay it back, you win, the lender gets screwed. Imagine waking up tomorrow headlines screaming, dollar collapses. Is the US dollar losing its dominance as a global currency reserve? Our currency is crashing and will soon no longer be the world standard. This has many countries looking at alternatives to the dollar. Your savings, your paycheck, your retirement, gone. Vanished overnight like smoke in the wind. But you, you're prepared. Because you saw the storm coming, you heard the whispers, and you took action. This isn't a doomsday movie, folks. This is the reality that could be just around the corner. And today, I'm here to tell you exactly what will happen to your debt when the dollar takes a nosedive, and how you can not only survive, but thrive in the economic chaos. So let's get straight into it. Right now, money prices are steeply rising with no signs of slowing down. This morning alone, the price of dollars nearly tripled, with one cent worth approximately six dollars. The one strong American dollar is now facing some problems. One big issue is the huge amount of money the United States owes, which is making things uncertain. The country has been spending more money than it has, making a massive debt that keeps getting bigger. This reliance on borrowing makes the dollar weak because if interest rates go up, it could cause more problems like higher borrowing costs, slower growth, and maybe even not being able to pay back debts. Another problem is inflation, where prices keep going up everywhere. This makes the dollar worth less, especially in other countries. To try and stop this, banks are making borrowing money more expensive. But this might make the US economy worse and maybe even cause a recession, which would make things even harder for the dollar. Currently, there's more uncertainty in the global game of politics. The fighting in Ukraine has caused big problems worldwide. It's messed up how things are made and increased the cost of energy a lot. With tensions all around, the dollar might not be seen as the safest choice compared to other currencies. While people spending money might not be growing much, the government has stopped spending a lot too. Our currency is crashing and will soon no longer be the world standard. So, what's left? Well, what's left is net exports. That's the stuff a country sells to others minus what it buys. How do you make net exports better? You make your money worth less. It's that simple. You essentially try to make the dollar less valuable. That's what's going on with QE, QE2, and keeping interest rates low. Basically doing everything to make the dollar worth less compared to other money to sell more stuff. And from what we know from the past, when money's value drops, it causes a lot of problems. Let's hope it doesn't happen, but it's good to be ready just in case. When the strong dollar starts having problems, it affects a lot of things and causes a big mess of not knowing what will happen financially. For people who owe a lot of money, if the dollar gets worse, it could be really bad. The interest rates, which depend on how the dollar is doing, would probably go way up. That means the money people have to pay every month for loans would become much bigger and turn loans that were okay before into really hard things to deal with. Money saved in banks, which usually felt safe, would suddenly be able to buy way less than before, just like a leaf drying up in a hot fire. Dreams of buying a home, plans for retiring, and even getting basic things might suddenly seem impossible because of how things are going in the economy. Governments, which already owe a lot of money, would have a huge problem to deal with. The cost of paying back those loans would go way up, taking more and more money from budgets that are already struggling. Programs that help everyone like healthcare and education, might have to get much less money. Important services that people always expected to be there might almost break down. The safety net that's supposed to help people when they need it might completely fall apart, leaving many people in a tough spot. Even big companies would feel the problems. The money they owe in dollars to people from other countries would be a big weight on them, making it hard to make money and grow. Trading things worldwide which usually relies a lot on the dollar, would slow down a lot. The way things are made and sent around the world, which is already having a hard time because of political problems, 
might completely stop. This would mean stores wouldn't have much to sell and companies would struggle a lot. Once these problems start, even the biggest companies could fail. And it would look like a lot of damage from big companies falling apart in the economy. But here's the thing, you're taking two kinds of risk. If you don't outpace inflation and taxes, you're losing purchasing power. When things get tough financially, it's not just about waiting and hoping things get better. It's about being flexible, strong, and having a good plan for your money. The first thing to do? Don't put all your money in dollars. Try different ways to invest, like gold, houses, or stable coins. Things that might stay valuable even if regular money isn't doing well. Think about investing in other countries' money or companies that use stronger money. Remember, your money plan should be like a puzzle with many pieces, not just one thing. Next, make a backup fund for emergencies, like a money safety net if things go wrong suddenly, especially with the dollar. Try to save enough money to live for three to six months without any problems, and keep it in a safe place where people can easily get it when needed. This extra money will give you time and space to figure things out without worrying too much about money right away. Lastly, keep yourself updated. Learn about how money and politics affect things, and about the different ways money works. Knowing things help you make good choices, and the more you know about how money and other things affect the economy, the better you can handle when things get tricky. Just remember, knowing things doesn't mean you can see the future, but it helps you get ready for different things that might happen. Many people have different thoughts about finances, especially when it comes to something as big as the dollar may be getting bad. But the people I pay attention to have spent a lot of time studying how financial collapses happen. First, let's talk about Carmen Reinhardt and Kenneth Rogoff. They're like a good team. I think it's gonna, it could be exacerbated if we go through a period of slow growth because that, that seems to be the plan for getting out of this is we'll have super fast growth for a long time and then we won't worry about it. They wrote a book called This Time is Different, Eight Centuries of Financial Folly. If that title doesn't show they're serious, I don't know what does. They looked at data from eight centuries of financial troubles and studied it. Their research connects what's happening now in the economy with things that happened before big money disasters. They talked about how having a huge amount of debt in a country can mean big trouble is coming. They said the US owes so much money now, it's almost as bad as it was during World War II. Completely unsustainable fiscal trajectory, it's completely rudderless. Uh, taxes uh, just at the federal level had been about 20% of GDP, now they're 15%. So they've got to go up by about a third just to get to normal and probably further to make up for all the debt that we've accumulated. It's kind of scary to think how close we are to big problems. Rogoff and Reinhardt also talk about something called financial repression, which is when governments do things to get rid of debt, but it can hurt people who save money. The issue of debt overhang is something that looms very large over all the advanced economies, whether it's the US, Europe, or Japan. The debt overhang in both public and private debts is very far from resolved. They might make it so banks can't give much interest and force them to buy government debt. Have you ever thought about how that could affect your retirement savings or your kids' college money? Yeah, that's something to think about. Now, let's talk about Suze Orman. You might have seen her on TV, where she makes complicated money advice easier to understand. Suze has been very open that a dollar collapse isn't a far off scary thing. It might happen. She explains that spreading out your money isn't just a smart thing to do, it's a way to make sure you're okay if something bad happens. You know, it's not just a recession, it's right now given the state of the economy, truthfully. To her, this means putting your money in different types of money and even valuable metals. For money that you want safe and sound, why not just simply buy three month or six month treasury bills? Suze also thinks it's important to have some extra money saved and some money in strong foreign money just in case something unexpected happens. You can't know when bad things will happen, but you can get ready for them. They're paying currently about 4.8%. I would not go out further than three or six months at this point in time because I do think interest rates are going to continue to go up. Reinhardt, Rogoff, and Suze Orman all think that if the dollar gets bad, it should make us pay attention. 
they're not the only smart people saying that the US dollar might be getting close to a big problem. Mostly because the country owes too much money, there's a risk of prices going way up, and things are not good politically worldwide. If the dollar gets bad, it could mean prices going way up, the economy getting worse, and maybe even problems in society. So, considering all this, maybe it's time to ask ourselves how ready we are for something like this. These smart people are sharing their advice to warn us, not to scare us like on Halloween. Maybe it's a good idea to listen and do something to be ready. Looking back at history shows us how bad things can be when a country's currency falls apart. For instance, let's consider Zimbabwe in the late 2000s. There, the prices of things went crazy because of too much inflation. Every day, prices would double, then triple, and then become four times as high. Running a business in Zimbabwe is tough. The constant uncertainty over the volatile Zimbabwean dollar doesn't help. To make matters worse, banks were recently ordered to stop lending with immediate effect. Making paychecks worthless very quickly. People had to start trading things instead of using money, like trading chickens to get haircuts or soap to fix their cars. All the money people had saved disappeared suddenly, and life became hard just to get basic things. There were long lines for food, and it was hard to get medicine. In Zimbabwe, people started using the American dollar instead of their own money just to stay alive. Remember these? And now defunct Zimbabwe dollar. A final collapse in 2009 rendered countless trillions of these dollars worthless. This showed how much they didn't trust their own money anymore. Over in the South Atlantic, Argentina faced a big problem in 2001, which teaches us something important. The country had a huge amount of debt, and when they tried to link their money, the peso, to the American dollar, it went very wrong. The value of their money dropped a lot. Banks stopped people from using their accounts, businesses fell apart, and many people lost their jobs. Argentinians were angry because they lost their money and jobs, and they protested loudly in the streets. They banged pots and pans, showing how bad things were. We're just a few meters in front of the presidential palace where hundreds of state employees are on in a protest here. After this, the value of the peso dropped a lot, making many people poor. They had to live with less money for a long time to try and fix what happened because their currency fell apart. As we reflect on these historical precedents, it becomes increasingly evident that safeguarding against a possible dollar collapse demands preparedness and strategic financial planning. Diversifying investments, fortifying savings, and staying informed about economic indicators and global trends emerge as vital steps in fortifying oneself against the uncertainties of a weakening dollar. 